This time of year in the marsh, you always have to contend with either gnats or wind. And I always say, given the choice, I'll take the gnats. I hate fishing in wind. That's especially true now that I've discovered that marsh romance, which keeps all gnats away, just an incredible product. But believe me, I won't be applying any marsh romance today because it is blowing a gale, super windy, but I've pushed back in the marsh and I've found some gorgeous water. So I like my chances for finding a few fish, let's see. I'll probably throw a million different baits today until I discover what the fish want, but I'm gonna start with this rattle trap. It's a quarter ounce, smaller bait, should attract some bites from some of these marsh fish. Water's way, way, way up. I've had two days of hard east winds and it's blown out the east again. Tide is falling, but right at the beginning of the fall, so the water's really high. You can see it's pushed way back in that grass. I like this situation for speckled trout. Not quite as much for bass and redfish. All right, no bites on the trap. Let's try a soft plastic. Got a shrimp creole matrix shad tied on from my last trip. Quarter ounce death grip jig head. Let's see if they want that. All part of putting the puzzle together. It's my favorite part of fishing. Every day is different. You never know where they are or what they want. So it keeps me coming back. Well, you're gonna have to earn them, Todd. All right, if you saw a recent video I did, I caught a bunch of fish on this fish lab flutter nymph. Ow, <laughs> sharp hook. I'm gonna throw it in this trinas with this fallen tide and see if any reds or bass are home in there. There's a fish, there's a fish, and it's a bass. There we go, all right. On the flutter nymph. I bet he's not the only one in there. We gotta take another look. Ah, oh, dude, you were hooked well. That's the flutter nymph, just a crazy bait. This thing produced a ton of fish for me on my last trip. Now the way I'm rigging, I gotta whisper, I'm super close to these fish, but the way I'm rigging this flutter nymph, the plastic is kind of tough. So I'm just putting the hook flush against the plastic so that it emerges on the hook set. Kind of learned the hard way the first time I fished it, not to bury that hook. Look at this pretty bend. There's one, there's one. Ooh, that's a good bass. Yeah, come on. Ooh, that's a good bass. Ooh, he's barely hooked. Oh, but he's hooked well enough. That's a really good bass. Oh, I didn't feel him hit at all. Oh man, he was just barely hooked. Lucky to get him. Chunky, chunky fish. All right, I caught some fish under a cork right at this intersection on a recent trip. So I'm gonna give this a shot. Tide is definitely higher than when I was here that time, but it shouldn't matter for these trout. They should be here. Oh, there's a fish. There's a, f oh man, what is that? That might be a trout, it looked kind of big. Now he's coming up and acting like a trout. Yeah, it looks like a trout, it looks like a nice one. Yeah, real good trout. Yeah, there we go, there we go, good fish. Man, that's about a 17, 18 inch trout. I think I'm gonna stick a tag in this fish and let him go. All right, dude, this might hurt a little bit but it's better than ending up in a ice chest. Fish that size are a little bigger than I like to keep. Just don't enjoy eating them as much as I do the smaller ones. So I don't see any reason to kill them. Definitely fun to catch though. Hopefully I get another one. Now I caught that fish on a salt strong power prawn on a 16th ounce death grip jig head. About three feet or so under a Versamax bull cork. Can't even tell you how many speckled trout I have caught this fall on this rig. <laughs> it's, it's a high number. Oh, there's a fish. There's a good trout. All right, 
Man, these fish are super healthy. Super healthy. So glad to see it. All right. It's about a 16 inch or so. Ow. Yeah, it's a pretty fish. I think I'm gonna take him home. I do need a few fish for some fish tacos, so he's a good candidate. These fish are just scattered throughout here, throughout this little bayou. Just gotta let my core cover a little water, and the good thing is, is when they're hitting it, they're really hitting it. They're taking it down, getting it deep in their mouths. Now, cork fishing is usually a technique I use to find fish, and once I find them, I typically try and catch them a different way. But when they're not actively feeding, which is definitely the case today, this is a super effective technique. And if you're fishing faster moving stuff, you're not gonna get any bites. You know, the funny thing is, the switch could flip at any moment and these fish just go crazy and start feeding. If that were the case, I'd probably switch techniques. But until then, it's never not fun watching a core go down. It's always fun. Thank goodness trout feed down. They hit a bait and go back down. Unlike sockele, which often, or we, we call them sockele, crappie, which often feed up. They hit a bait and move up. Oh goodness, that was a good takedown. Oh my goodness, is that beautiful or what? Oh, this fish is going crazy. Look, another nice trout. Look how nice these fish are. Dude. I mean, just super solid fish. Look how deep he took it. No chance he was gonna get off. Fat, fat, beautiful fish. And this is why I absolutely love fall. You could rip every month off the calendar, but October, November, December, I'd be a very happy man. December 31st, we just go to October 1st <laughs> and do these three months all over again. If you haven't seen my previous videos using this power prawn, and I gotta tell you, it has been smoking hot. It has been super hot, but the company that makes them salt strong lets me offer viewers 40% off their first pack. So if you wanna try them, you can get them pretty cheap. I think you can only order them online, so you're gonna have to go to the Salt Strong website. I've got a link in the video description. You gotta use the code MARSH40 to get the 40% off your first pack. And a lot of people have commented saying that they didn't get 40% off their whole order. Well, yeah, you're not gonna get 40% off your whole order, only your first pack of these power prawns. They make a few colors. I haven't tried them. I've only tried this natural. It's three and a half inch. They make a bigger one. I mean, if I was a dedicated power prawn user, believe me, <laughs> I'd try all the colors they have, but I really just haven't seen any reason to switch. That natural color is not, it's not beautiful. It's nothing you'd look at and say, ooh, it's just kind of dull, but man, the fish love it. When you think about it, a real shrimp is pretty dull. All right, seems our bite kind of dried up. Move on and see where else we can find them. Oh, there's a fish. Goodness, a beautiful bass right at that Trinas. Holy Toledo, that's a big bass. I got a bad hook set. Hopefully we get him in. <laughs> Dude, you're gonna walk me to the back of the boat. Ooh, that's a nice bass. Come on. Let's show the viewers. I'm gonna let you go. All right, nice bass. Oh yeah, you hooked well. No chance of you getting off on the flutter nymph. Such a pretty fish. Fat football, fat green football. All right, dude, swim off. There you go, all right. There's a fish. Oh, a nice trout on the flutter nymph. Beautiful trout. I got two hits on that cast. Missed them both, but I didn't miss this guy. Took it deep. I mean, you figure, this dude sees this, it's gotta look like a shrimp, right? That's what he's thinking. All right. Getting some blood on the ice chest. This poor, Flutter Nymph has seen better days. He's in bad shape. They do last long, last a lot of fish, because it's a kind of a bit of a harder plastic, which is why I'm not burying that hook, but we salvaged him. Oh, 
Oh, there's a fish. Uh, no idea. I'm not calling this. I don't know what it is. It's either a trout or a bass, but it looks really nice. Whoo, man. Yeah, it's nice. Oh, it's a big trout. Oh, another trout's coming. Look at that. Another fish is trying to take it out of its mouth. I don't know if that came out on camera. Literally, another trout came up next to it, trying to take the flutter nymph out of this fish's mouth. Incredible. Oh, goodness. Beautiful, beautiful trout. Man, just awesome. I can't tell you how excited I am to be catching trout on this thing. I tell you what, every day I count my blessings for having been born in South Louisiana. There's not many places on the planet where you set the hook, see a fish erupt, and have no idea if it's a speckled trout or a largemouth bass. A lot of people think these two fish can't cohabitate, but they clearly do. Oh man, I got smoked. I missed him. Shoot, that was a very good hit. Well, you can't catch them all. Otherwise it wouldn't be any fun. But I wish I had that one. If you haven't seen the video where I introduced this bait, the way I discovered it was I saw some underwater footage of it and thought, man, this thing, it looks really good. It looks a little bit crazy, not in the water, but in the water, man, let me tell you. It looks phenomenal. Oh, come on, come on back. Messed up, I bet. All right, I gotta change this out. These fish are hitting, missing, and then hitting again, but they're not gonna do that when it's balled up. This is the package these things come in. I've only got three left. I have to order some more. I don't know if anybody sells them locally. I'm gonna check. I got these online from the Fish Lab website and I'm just Texas rigging it. Shoving the hook through its bulbous head. Coming out and just sticking it through that tail. Again, I'm not burying it. That's it. There he is. That's another trout. Got three hits on that cast. These fish are all so big. <laughs> I mean, they're just beautiful fish. Just consistent, solid, beautiful speckled trout. Look, I hooked him outside the mouth. Gorgeous, look at all the spots on him. It's because of this beautiful water. All right, let's see if these fish will also hit a cork. Oh, apparently so. Apparently they will. Another trout. Ooh, man, such a beautiful trout. All right. Oh, look at this guy. That's about a 17 incher, super long fish, super well hooked. There we go. I'm gonna tag him and let him free. All right, big fella. Hopefully it doesn't hurt too bad. There you go. Oh, look at that. Sorry, dude. <laughs> that was awesome. He hit me as I was pulling the bait out. Makes you think you got to fish faster, right? Good 14 inch fish. Would be legal even under the new limits. There's one. All right, quick, get in the boat there, bud. Good keeper size. Let's see how big he is just for kicks. 14 and a half, healthy, chunky, beautiful speckled trout. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and call it a day. And what a special day it was. On my previous trip 
throwing this flutter nymph, I caught a bunch of bass, just a crazy amount. That was another hit. And a flounder, I caught a flounder as well. I had a redfish hooked up and lost him, but it's nice to see that speckled trout love this thing as well. So bait, I'm gonna be throwing a lot more, that's for sure. I suspected this thing would work when I saw that underwater footage and last trip confirmed that it's phenomenal. And this trip just solidified that. But hopefully you enjoyed the video, and got something out of it. If you wouldn't mind, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the Marshman Masson channel on YouTube. Oh, good night. <laughs> Gotta make one more cast, right? Until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, we'll see you right here on Marsh Van Masson. And I don't know, good chance we'll be throwing this. <laughs>